In the video on testing your model, we showed you a simple way to use the same example set for training and testing in order to measure the performance of the model. But there we tested the model on the same data on which we trained it, which is much like giving a student all questions of a test before testing them. Measuring the performance of the student this way is not going to help us if you want to know how well will they do when they're asked to answer questions they haven't seen before. After all, this is what we are really interested in. What we could have done instead is to give that student 80 example questions of our 100 ones available and then also test them on our 20 new questions which they have not seen before. Or even better, if you want to make sure that our selection of question has no effect on their performance, we should do this multiple times. Of course, using different students would mean changing the boundary conditions and hence we need to reset our single unfortunate student's memory before each one of the tests. The two methods described here are called split validation and cross validation. And we will talk about the latter one, cross validation, in this video. On the screen, I have the process O4 testing the model open and displayed. If you want to follow along, you can download the data file and processes which we are using and import them. The data loading process video will show you how it is done. Now let's go ahead and let's get started on the cross validation. First, let's get rid of everything after the filter examples operator by dragging a rectangle over them and then just hit delete on your keyboard. Then, let's come over to our operator panel and search for cross validation. So let's drag that over here and connect the ports. Before we dive into what we need to do with this validation operator, let's talk a little bit about what cross validation does. If I look at my parameter panel over here, I have something called number of folds and default is 10. So what does that mean? Well, when I have the default of 10, it will take my data set and break it down into 10 smaller subsets of data. Then it will go ahead and build a model on nine of those, keeping one of them for testing and then it will iterate. Sounds confusing, doesn't it? Well, let's take a look at the image here, which will help us to clear up some of the confusion. In this particular case, we have a data set that has five cross validations. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, five iterations. And so what the cross validation does is it breaks the data set into five subsets, trains and builds the model on four and measures the performance on the fifth. Then it iterates it, selects another four, different ones and selects another separate test data set and then builds the model, measures the performance and finally begins to average that. So it will do that over the entire five or 10 or however many validations you set and give you an average performance of the models. So let's switch back. If you look closely at the cross validation operator, you can see two operator boxes stacked on top of each other. Whenever you see that in any rapid minor operator, then that operator is a sub process. So double click on that now we actually have two new windows. Do you remember how we talk about training and testing our student on different subsets of questions? In the sub process of this validation operator, I have a section for training and I have one section for testing. So the left window represents what we have in our testing the model video. You also have seen this briefly when we started this video. Since this is the training area, we clearly need to put our decision tree model in here. I'm going to pass my training data to this decision tree and build a model from it. So I will connect the MOD to the MOD port. On the right hand side, we will do our testing. And for that, we need to apply our model to our testing subset and measure the performance. Let's pull in in our apply model operator and also the performance operator. So before we make any of these connections, let's talk a little bit about them. Here in the training window, we create the model. Since you want to apply it, we need to feed the information about the model into our apply model operator. Now we need the unlabeled test data to which we want to apply to it. In our O4 testing the model process, this came initially from the multiply operator. So where does it come from in a cross validation? The copying or example selection of the test and training subset is done automatically and represented through the two windows. Now we can get the test example set here from the TES port. So let's connect that and then send our new label examples to the performance operator. And finally, since you're doing multiple iterations in a cross validation, the PER port of our performance will go to the PER port to build the average of the different models performances. Great. Now we are almost ready to run the model. Let's go up one level outside of the sub process. Come back here to the validation operator and connect the PER port to the results. Now we click on the run process button. These are the results. Well, what you see here is a confusion matrix. So no wonder we are a bit confused. That was a cheap shot. But once you know how to read it, then it's quite simple. 
Let's start over here with the accuracy. The overall accuracy of all predictions achieved by the 10 models, each of which made a prediction of 90 examples, after being trained on the other roughly 800 is nearly 82%. That is a percentage of correct predictions. The plus minus is one standard deviation which is calculated from our 10 individual model accuracies. This is a critical, important item to note when you're evaluating your model. The lower this number, the smaller the one standard deviation value is, and the more stable is your model. A stable model, given that it has high enough accuracy, is good as it will give you a smaller range of best and worst cases which you have to consider for the quality of your predictions. Now let's take a closer look at the table. Pred loyal stands for predicted loyal. Pred churn stands for predicted churn. Now if you look down the columns of the table, you can see what labels we had in our example set. And then if they were predicted right or wrong. So we had a total of 491 plus 87 loyal candidates. And when we ran the algorithm through, they predicted loyal 491 times, which were actual true loyals. And 87 times it predicted churn. But in fact, it should have been loyal. In total, we were able to capture nearly 85% of our loyal cases. For the churn cases, we achieved 77%. A really handy way to look at it is to look at the diagonal which shows the true loyals and the true churns that were predicted correctly. And now you can see how the overall accuracy which we first talked about is calculated. It is a total of correct predictions, 491 plus 248 given as a percentage of all 900 predictions. The last thing to look at is the class precision which shows the percent of predictions that were correct for each predicted label, loyal or churn. So if you want to calculate that for our churners, you simply add 87 plus 248 and divide 248 by that sum to get 74%. Now, if we interpret the table with focus on our churners, then we can say that we are currently managing to predict 77 out of 100 true churners. And that's it. That's how you can effectively validate the model and see how good it is before you take the next steps to improve it or decide to put it into the production and deploy it. Before we end this tutorial, let's save the process. So, let's go to our repository to the left, highlight process, right click, store process here, and let's call it 05 cross validation. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching.